Hey! My name is Chris Quinlan from Melbourne Musos. And this is my dear friend Scott Haywood. And this is a Bo Diddley beat. Thank you very much, umpire. Okay, there you go. Welcome to Melbourne Musos. My name's Chris Quinlan, as I said, and this is my dear friend, Scott Haywood. How are you going, Scott? Very well. Very Doing well. all right? Doing okay? There you go. How's that Kingsway traffic today, eh? Oh, wonderful. Oh, lock us all back up. There you are. <laughs> that was a Bo Diddley beat. Let me explain that to you. Let me explain it. What you've got is a typical beat where you've got three, two. You've got one, two, three, one, two. I Want Candy, all sorts of different songs, you know, Desire by You Too and all this sort of stuff. And what you've got is you've got that one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And four. Why not come in, Scott? And what happens is that that is one of the central beats of so much music, okay? Now, what it is is 3-2 clave. It sort of comes from Africa into South America, all of that sort of stuff. And what ends up happening is depending on how you're um, playing it, you can turn it into a couple of different kinds of styles. Now, what we were doing there was basically the pop star from the, or the rock and roll star from the 1950s, Bo Diddley. And what happens with that is it's, you get that kind of... Buy my girl a diamond ring If that diamond ring don't shine I think it's all G. That's what goes on, you see. But then, if you practice it on the snare drum, what you can start to do is get a bit of a New Orleans second line rhythm happening. So you get that kind of. There you go. Thank you, Scott. That's terrific. There you are. And what happens is um, that's a marching beat. So if I sort of go at it from there, you've got that kind of... And there's a lot of presses. Now, you can't see it from that camera there, but you can see it from this one here, hopefully, if I bring it down a bit and all that. Hello. And uh, what happens is you've got that little bit of a press. Stick click if you don't mind. But what happens, I'll, that's a, a New Orleans second line rhythm. Um, that's the second line when you're doing the marching thing, you know, all that sort of stuff. But what happens then is you can start to turn it into a little bit of a kind of a funk rock beat kind of a thing uh, where what simply, simply put, I'll, I'll quickly go over it. The Bo Diddley kind of deal is down here on the tom. all that sort of business. You can flam it. That kind of 
kind of stuff there. And then what happens is if we've got our single stroke roll going here, you can sort of meld it into a kind of a rock beat there. Because if I'm just doing a single stroke roll, and you've got That's third, st third stone from the sun, isn't it? That came out of nowhere. Ha! <laughs> Thank you for that lovely little surprise. There you go. So what happens? So there's that kind of thing there, you see. Um, 3-2 clave suddenly turns into a bow diddly beat. It can go across to um, essentially a, a bit of a funk rock beat. And Scott's pulled out third stone from the sun with it and all that. But then I can go a little bit on the quieter side and um, uh, start to use some brushes. Any excuse to play brushes? I love my brushes. And um, what can start to happen? We'll bring it down just a little bit here. One of the things about brushes is um, not only, not only do you get the Desenex Burger side four of Roxy and Elsewhere, because this is Zappadan, the start of Zappadan. Here we are. It's the first day. Um, I should have put that in before. I'm a bit scatterbrained. Uh, but um, today is the the day uh, that dear, our dear Frank Zappa went to the great gig in the sky, but it's not a sad thing because on the 21st of December, it's his birthday. And Zappa fans all over the world love, just we put on Zappa non-stop. But what I'm gonna do now is just sort of work the brushes. Can you hear it? What I was doing there was a little bit of um, something that I should probably talk about a bit. I do it so much, but um, it's a little bit of a quirky little thing called hi-hat splashes, right? Like that kind of thing. So when you've got both hands preoccupied with other things, that wasn't meant to be a double entendre. It sort of came out that way. Help me Lead out here, way. Scott. Come on, Lead help. That way. <laughs> help. <laughs> anyway, what happens with that is that if you want to get a bit of air in the room. A couple of jazz lines there, Scott. Oh, you're ready.
something like that anyway. There you go. And um, that's what goes on with that. So when we're bringing things down, you've always got that pulse. Even if you don't, um, even if you don't always play dun, bah, 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 you can imply the thing. And then the hi-hat with your splashes, you know, it sort of gives it a bit of air and a few different things. I'll tell you where that came from, and it did come from the Zappa Instrumental back in the 90s. One of the things with Frank Zappa's music is that it is so complicated with polyrhythmic and polymetric time and all that sort of stuff. So, so often, I'd be... It's one of these things in jazz where what goes on is that the hi-hat is often thought of is you can, you know, especially with more advanced, you know, contemporary jazz and stuff, that you would um, say... All this sort of overlaid stuff, and you'd leave the, the, the general thing is leave the hi hat for the band. So I used to leave the hi hat for the band, and if I just did the normal chick, um, the guys couldn't really hear it. So I ended up just doing that. Ah, that's great. And it became a bit of a thing, you know, especially when you're. You know, you're doing all this sort of otherworldly, all that sort of stuff. All the Vinnie Colaiuta stuff. Oh, in the day. Vinnie! And um, there'd just be that high, you know, you'd have the hi-hat. Um, Terry Bozier would do the same. You could hear his chick, 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 you know, when, you know, in Zapper in New York and things like that. Bit of a multi-layered lesson today, face chook, all that lesson with... Um, <laughs> educational. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I, I meant... I know what you meant. Yes. Educational, he said this morning on Facebookery. And it is educational. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, very well-placed use of apostrophes there. Anyway, so what it is, is there's that, you see. So what goes on then is that um, you get that kind of... Uh, now I'm into sort of poly, poly, polyrhythmic stuff and all that sort of stuff. I didn't mean to. Um, actually, what I was going to do next was sort of do a little bit of a sequel because I got a bit of feedback from my show a few weeks ago um, when I was doing the tribute to Uriah Heep. And um, I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you the tale. Is um, um, Dear Lee Kerslake passed away in September. And the kind of year we've all had, I just didn't want to do another tribute. So it was a bit remiss of me to sort of go, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I'll just move on. <laughs> there you go. And, um, and uh, then what happened was um, then Ken Hensley passed away. So what it is, is what I did was um, one of the things about Uriah Heep, they could play a mean shuffle, okay? Really great shuffle. And um, Lee Kerslake was great at it, great at that. They do the jump rhythm, but it's sort of like a hard rock jump rhythm. Like Might as well jump into that. I, 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 we weren't, we didn't have that worked out, do we? Anyway. And that's both hands. There you go. A quick one. We didn't even work that out. Anyway, so what it is, is that's, that's kind of a jump rhythm. And then you can have, um, it almost comes from a, an Irish jig kind of deal, uh, where you have that kind of... Have done a few of those? Yeah, I've done a few. We've of done a thing with a little... Oh, we might as well do it. Chicken dance, eh? Hey? Ha <laughs> 
You know why I went into double bass drum? I'm not sure. <laughs> I was doing the St Albans Reception Centre. I think it was around about 1991. And uh, I just got from dear Paul Mosum from Tom Tom Trading Company. Hello, Paul. Um, I've got these new pedals, Chris. They're the DW5000 Accelerator. You have to say it like that. Accelerator pedals and all that. So I brought it along, right? I brought it along to the same. I wanted to try them out. And we had Ross, the bass player. And he said, what the bloody hell is that contraption down there? And I said, they're the new D5, DW5000 accelerator pedals. I said, how do they work? He hadn't seen double kick pedals before. He always thought if you had two, if you had, if you needed two feet, you needed two bass drums, you know, that kind of thing, back in the day. And um, so I said, I'll show you during chicken dance. <laughs> so it was like, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Da -da 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 might as well join in, we're doing it now. No, that's the bit where I've got to do the double bass drum. And I went into that. Never got a gig again. He was there going. Bloody hell. All that sort of stuff. Anyway, there you go. That was a little bit of sideline kind of thing. We weren't going to do the chicken dance tonight. It always comes out. <laughs> anyway, so what happens is we're back to the heap, the Uriah heap, and they were great at their shuffles, right? And um, Lee's, Lee Kerslake, um, I rem always remember Uriah heap live, and I think it was at the end of Gypsy. Dun, dun. Da, 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 da. Put a whip across my back. More that kind of thing. Sorry, I'm acting. It's like Jack Black, you know, as a tribute or whatever. But anyway, what it is, is let's move on to that. So what we've got is a 3-2 clave, and that was based on a single stroke roll. And then you put your accents in and away you go, you see. And um, with that, you can also do a calypso and a reverse clave, you know, all this sort of piece. But I'm moving on. If you take your triplets, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one, that kind of thing there. The, um, the idea behind a rolling shuffle, especially if you're putting it into Celtic music, it's meant to um, sort of mimic a, a Bowron sort of thing, the Irish frame drum. That kind of thing there, you see. And uh, what happens then is to make a rolling shuffle, what you end up having is that triplet and you're moving it to um, the right hand to a cymbal and then you, you know, putting the back beat on two and four, I'll put in a little rim shot, so one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. There you go. Thank you, Scott. So what happens is you've got this one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. Now, what starts to happen with this is that with the frame drum, with the bower on, what you've got is a, a tipper. It's essentially, it's about that big, it looks like a pen. You actually hold it like a pen and it's got a, a tip on both sides and you go up, down, dun, ka -dun, ka -dun, ka -dun, ka -dun, like that. From a drummer's point of view, um, you, I'll put it up on the hi-hat. You start to get that. You get that kind of thing. So it becomes almost like a 6-8 march sort of thing. But it's got more of a, think of it more like a Irish jig. So. That. And you 
double a double tap on the bell. I'm getting told we're having drinks later on. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Something like that anyway, you see? So what starts to happen, you've got this flow. That sort of kind of thing. And then you can get into different ideas with this because what starts to go on is you've got that kind of... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to the brushes again and all this because you can get a great feel with this as well and get it a little bit laid back together. And what you can do is sort of slide the brush, see? Now that's all triplets, right? Thank you very much. That was very nice. Thank you. You see, so what happens? Oop, pardon me. So what goes on with that is that when you're starting to apply the triplets, you can get that sort of scooping feel with it too. So, and it gives you that kind of a cross rhythmic thing. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and two and a three and a four and a one. Put in the back beat. There it is, you see? So that's just something else with brushes. You can sort of tell this is a bit of a multi-tiered lesson. I'm sort of doing this and coming back. I'm hoping, hoping you're finding it. It's a little bit connected, I hope. A bit connected. And there you go. So that's what goes on with that. That's, that's a, a rolling shuffle. Okay, so when you're dealing with shuffles, I do this with my kids sometimes, my little ones, you know, like when they're six or seven or eight. So my really young ones, get them to skip, get them to skip across the um, room, if you've got enough room and all that, and the sound of skipping is actually the sound of a shuffle and all that sort of stuff, that's what goes on. So it's a, it's a way, sort of, kind, a holistic way of actually getting a shuffle, because often is you've got that, one to two to three to four to one, Might as well work it up a bit, yeah. And you sort of dig in with this, I'm doing the bass drum. And back into the rolling shot. So that's what goes on there, you see. That's what happens. Thank you again, Scott. There you go. So what happens with this? You've got that. You've got that there. And when you really want to get into that kind of shuffly thing, seeing I'm moving into that now, 
you can treat your left hand like a spacer block, so to speak. So if I'm doing this, because sometimes what happens is, especially when you've got a student, you, could, you might have one to two to three to four to, oh, I think I'm getting it now. One to two to three to four to one. It goes, flattens out into a rock beat and you sort of go, no, 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 it's two thirds and one third. That kind of thing. One to two to three to four to 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 one to two to like that sometimes. And what happens is you've got to try and get that going. So a spacer block. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Now when we're talking about jazz, you can do the same thing with jazz, you see. You can have a jazz sticking. So you can have right, left, left, right, left, right, right, because you've got your jazz. This set loves to get crashed. That happens there. Thank you again. And what happens then is you've got that jazz thing. You hear that with the hi hat? I sort of like that one, isn't it? And that's just... So what I'm doing is a jazz rhythm with the right hand, you know? And I'm using the, that as the spacer and all that sort of stuff, you see? So that's what goes on there. We've got a couple of different things going on tonight. So what happens is, uh, let me recap. For a start, we started off with... Started off with that one. And then um, we took it for a bit of a spin, like the. And I believe that was third stone from the sun. There it is, there, you see. So that's what goes on there. And. Um, did Mitch Mitchell do a Bo Diddley thing? I've got to listen to, to that again. Not on that one. Not on That's that one? I felt like I might have pushed the boundaries. <laughs> do you remember Cozy Powell? <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. yeah, Rainbow and all that sort of stuff. But what he did, um, he had that drum single out and he put Third Stone um, from the Sun, the main theme, right over the top of... So uh, did, uh well, whoever did I'm Too Sexy for This Shirt. Oh, the dirty mongrel. Right, said Fred, it was in there as yeah. well. Yeah. Ah. Anyway, um, but, um, and Cozy Powell called it Dancing with the Devil. Yes, I remember I've got now. a neighbour that talks about that song. And oh, and, and you know what else? It's coming, all coming back to me now. Mum threw all my singles out. So it was with, yeah, I, I don't have it anymore. I had it on 45. And I remember it was Rack Productions, which was the same record company as Susie Quattro. How's that for a bit of 
one percenter. There you go. And there's one in our household that's a bit important, and that's his intro to the Rainbow Song. Oh, we... Stargazers, is that what it's called? Oh, hang on. I think there's an expert on hand that would know. Yes. <laughs> Oh, did I miss the... I missed the lick of the century. Yeah. Was that it? Yeah, that's the one. God, that... I can't quite pull out the riff, though. I'm trying to think of it. It's in E. Yeah, something like that. It's Blackmore, so it's got to be harmonic minor. Yeah. His sneak charmer scale, which is really like a dual harmonic. Oh my God, I've gotten, gone down there to a drummer telling the guitarist what scale. Oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, don't. Don't, Chris. No, don't go there. It'll come to me. Dun 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 Oh, I've got a. You know, I've been. You know what I've, I've had in my head all. I'm not expecting you to just play it straight off, but um, because it is Zappa Dan. Don't worry. I was impressed last night watching that clip <laughs> when you were able to hum it yeah. enough for me to realise. Hum it badly. Yes, that's what he's playing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, but anyway, there you go. I was, I'm, I'm wrapping up the show and we've got a whole new one starting up. And so what happens is, uh, where the hell was I? Rolling shuffle. I was up to that. Triplets, one and a two and a three and a four and a... And then you do your rudimentary. So there we have it. That's the rolling shuffle. We did a couple of other things as well. And um, all the different shades of a shuffle and um, all the different shades of a 3-2 clavo, the Bo Diddley, second line rhythm from New Orleans, all this sort of business. So I better start thinking about wrapping the show up and all that sort of stuff. Um, now, at this juncture, juncture, I can't even say it, eh. Um, what it is, is this is a gorgeous place to play, all right? And I need to thank Alan Rendell, the general manager and all this sort of stuff, um, the Barnett brothers and all this sort of business. And um, what it is, is um, because we've gone through 2020 the way that we have, this wonderful place needs your help because um, we've got so much stuff happening. Getting back on the horse, this wonderful place, you know, thing here, and, and during lockdown one or through June, I was over on just the other side of the room with this beautiful piano and stuff in this gorgeous room. And over there, we've got two theatres with wonderful things happening. We've got Alex Rocks, we've got some um, theatre coming back now, all this sort of stuff. And um, chip in, because what happens is... Um, we're running on the smell of an oil rag. You can see there's a rubber band and a piece of string and all this kind of stuff. And that's, that's the way that, you know, we roll. Community TV, God help me. If we can get a packet of rubber bands for free. Oh, shit. Anyway, but what goes on is that places like this need to keep going because of um, the opportunity for me to invite Scott onto the show and um, get things done. Uh, the Barnett brothers who help, and they're doing things in Theatre 1 and Theatre 2. And out the back is this wonderful holodeck thing, oh my lord. 
and you've got to see what's going on with that. And um, we might be, I don't know, we might be over there in a couple of weeks with lots of things happening. But this theatre is for you. So we get the people in, give back. So there's my plug for the Alex Theatre, the opportunities that they give. I mean, you know, like, really? I really had a I'm not worthy moment when I was asked to come in and do Facebook Live, you know, at the Alex Theatre in the middle of the year. And that was when we were fighting like crazy to keep community TV on air, you know, that kind of thing. And never more than now do we need places like this, community TV and all this, you know, this year we've beaten it. I don't even want to talk about America and all that sort of stuff, but here we are. And this theater is integral to the arts, especially in St Kilda and all this, but all the surrounds, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, that's my plug for the Alex Theatre and, and all that live in it and all that for giving us the opportunity to do our business here. And there you go. I'd like to thank my dear friend Scott Hayward. There you go. Thank you for um, following me around. <laughs> for, for <laughs> work on it like that. Doing Kingsway. Yeah, that's all right. That's, that's all cool. And um, all of that sort of business. And introducing, reintroducing Third Stone from the Sun and all, as well. That's a lovely surprise. And, in, and we nearly did a whole other show on Rainbow and all that as well. Eh, at least, and we did the chicken dance for better or worse. There we are. With a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And that is Facebook Live. Okay. So with that, we'll have one last jam to finish. What would you like to... Are we... What? Interesting. Oh, Scott had that figured out. much take care good night we're off to <laughs> i'll have this up um probably tomorrow and all that and uh take care with everything it's up dan uh right now on youtube um i'm hoping um that um zappa claws spiffed up reissue is on so go and have a look at that i'll put it up on uh, face chookery um later tonight or something and um 
and all that sort of business with a couple of presses of the button and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, there you go. I'm out of here. I'm going to unplug everything. Thank you very much. Hey, oh, up. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.